guys, how's it going? I hope you enjoyed seeing all of these planting projects kind of melded together in one big project. Typically we do videos on every separate planting project, uh, but I know that a lot of you guys have already seen us plant these areas like in our Versailles garden and the containers around the barn. Um, so we just thought, since our spring was so weird and a lot of our projects were pushed way out because of our cold springs and cold temperatures, like it'd get really warm and then it would drop again. Like for example, tomorrow's high is 95 and then the next day it's in the low 60s and then Sunday the high is 58 in June, which is absolutely crazy and our low is 42. Um, so I really don't know what to expect there. I'm expecting a big storm. I don't know what it's going to do to the garden, but Anyway, we just decided it would be best to work on these projects over the course of several days. Like I think this is my third set of clothes <laughs> during this one video um, and then kind of put them all together in one. The cats are fighting. Hey, you two behave, behave yourselves. And right now it's really early in the morning. Like Benjamin's still asleep. Aaron just got up and I thought I would pop out here real quick and give you a tour of all the areas we planted up and kind of talk through the plants and such. So this is kind of what Versailles looks like in the morning. The sun comes up over there on the east. So the sun's kind of coming toward us. It's a little sheltered by the or shaded by the locusts there. Um, so I'll get in close on these plants so you can see what I've used. But I used two different kinds of mini Vista supertunias. This one is called Mini Vista Indigo. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the growth habit of these. They are much, uh, not, they're not compact because these will grow and fill in, but they have got much more of a, like a tight growth habit and then a little bit smaller flowers. And I just think that they're a beautiful color. And then in the other square, so I've got Indigo in these two corners here. And then in these two corners, you two behave. In these two corners, we've got Mini Vista Pink Star. So you can see right there, it's almost got like a silverberry, the Supertunia silverberry look on the main part of the petals. And then it's got uh, dark pink striping. But again, kind of the same growth habit. This one's a little taller in appearance, not as tight to the ground, um, but smaller flowers. And I'm just really excited to see how these fill in. Hey, you two, you're on my flowers. Hey, get, hey. You too are being naughty. <laughs> go fight in your own space, people. Come on, go, go, go. We thought it would be interesting to try the mini Vistas up here because Vista Supertunias, of all the Supertunias, can take the most adversity, I think. Um, they do the best in landscape and containers, like you can use them interchangeably that way. I mean, all the Supertunias usually do fairly well either way, but I've noticed that, like I tried Supertunia Limoncello up here one year and it didn't hold up as well as the Vista series does. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how these do. So let's head up to the front of the house and look at the second project. Also, I have to tell you that I am using one of my old vlog cameras because I broke my new one. <laughs> in fact, you may have noticed in recent videos, our footage is a little shaky, and it's because I was trying to uh, screw my camera on top of my little tripod thing, and it fell and went skidding across our kitchen floor, and it broke the internal stabilization, which makes all of our footage shaky. So we've got a new one on the way. Okay, up in front of the house, we're dealing with both sun and shade, as you can see here in the morning. And then as the day progresses, this gets into full sun, and then by like late afternoon, it starts to shade this side of the hydrangea flower bed. And then it slowly moves across and shades at the very hottest part of the day, which is kind of nice. I'll try to get some pictures of this whole area when it's all in the same lighting. So it might be easier to see detail. First of all, before we even get into the annuals we've got in this area, look at the Atlas roses. Those are the most stellar roses ever. I know I need to deadhead these right now, but let me get close. Look at these. They are the most glorious roses up here. I love them. So you can see in the center of the cutouts, the cats are just wild this morning, that I used an angel face angelonia called steel blue. Let me see if I can get close on one in the shade here so I can show you this beautiful color. Just absolutely gorgeous. Then down below, supertunia mulberry charm, which we've had amazing luck with this supertunia in containers particularly. So I wanted to try it in the ground in several locations this year. And then lemon coral sedum. So last year we did the truffula pink gomfrina uh, and then underplanted that with the Supertunia mini vista morning glory and lemon coral. And I did want to repeat lemon coral up here because it did so well 
for us last year that I just kind of didn't want to mess with a good thing and I just swapped out the other two and really wanted it to make it a little bit more like still kind of pink but with more purple. So I repeated the same sort of planting scheme underneath our limelight hydrangeas which are doing really fantastic. And on this side I didn't use the angelonias because I didn't want their height to compete with the atlas roses. I think that they would have matched each other too well. So I just did the supertunia and lemon coral on this side. And I'm not gonna be planting up these boxwood containers. I'm gonna trim up the boxwoods. I still haven't tightened them up. But every time I plant these, I always feel like it's too much. It gets too messy. I've got a lot going on in these flower beds and sometimes it just is too much. So I want the simplicity with just the boxwoods. I think that that will bring some peace and just, I don't know, less t distraction, I guess, from the everything else going on. Let me back up. So there's a backed up look. Uh-oh, I need to go <laughs> fix my wreath. I think it's looking really good. Now to the barn pots. On our way, we'll take a quick look at this area because I think it's coming along. I mean, I have a lot yet to plant, but it's looking tidy with mulch. I added the four boxwoods at the corners there. Delphiniums still need to be staked, but this arrangement's looking nice. This is the first one I planted with summer plants that are more tolerant of cold as well. I think things are looking good, even though this container gets nailed by the wind this direction right here. So it usually like after a big windstorm, I kind of have to like fluff this plant back over, but overall looking really good. Barn containers next. I'll get close on one of them. We've got the boxwood spiral in the center there. And then I did a sweet potato vine called Sweetheart Lime. And I like this one because it's a very clean looking sweet potato vine. There are some that are much heavier lobed, um, like they've got I don't know, kind of almost more maple leaf-esque, but I like the, the weight that this one gives just because it's one solid kind of block of a leaf and it's more compact in its growth habit. And then Supertunia Royal Magenta, which we've put this plant in the barn containers before and I enjoyed it so much that I wanted to repeat it. And then Supertunia Honey and Supertunia mini vista indigo right there. So typically what I do is I do three of one plant that's kind of an anchor color and then I alternate with three other different things to give it some variation. Now I did bring my Falcos out because I wanted to show you some of these, like they're looking a little bit overgrown because they've been sitting in our greenhouse for too long. This is what I typically do with something like this. We come along and we tighten up, even though we're sacrificing some flowers, we're gonna tighten them up. That'll encourage more dense growth, more flowering. And doesn't that look so much better? Just having those things trimmed off a little bit more compact, it'll let it grow out more evenly and thickly. So I'm gonna do the same thing right here to this one. I'm just gonna come in, cut off a little bit of the length there. Just tighten that one up right there. And then even take this one off here. So even that has made the appearance of this pot look a little bit better. And I need to do that to a couple more. And these are very reminiscent of the color choice I put up in our front entryway containers. I think having the moon garden and having that area to really use a lot more muted colors has made me want to do bright things in the rest of my containers. And then up there in the window box, which you can't really see it very well right now, I did put play in the blue salvia as my centerpiece. And then the mini Vista Indigo, Royal Magenta and Honey. No potato vine up there. I just wanted color coming down. I do believe I planted up the chicken coop pots next. So chicken coop pots, I used an osteospermum called Bright Lights White, and I wanted that to fill in because it grows like eight to 10 inches, I believe, and I wanted to fill in the kind of the bottom area. We've got a Serbian spruce lollipop here. Uh, so then we'll have a little trunk showing, a little bit of kind of like a second story. And then down here, we've got three Supertunia Mulberry Charm, one Supertunia Royal Velvet, a Supertunia called Sharon, which has the sweetest double flowers, kind of a really dainty looking bloom, and a Superbina called Royal Peachy Keen. This one, I love the coral pink. It kind of brings more of a tropical vibe to arrangements, I think. I also changed over all of the drip in these containers, most of the containers, with this is a drip tube that has holes, emitter holes every nine inches. So, so far so good. Next up were these two containers flanking the opening to our brick patio. And in these, let's see if I can shade, I did use a caladium. This is called Chinook. And I'm really excited. I tried some caladiums in this pot last year that did really, really well. It was a different variety, but I wanted to put them through their paces here. And kind of like, this is a good, I think, trial location because it gets quite a bit of sun, but it's protected 
from the really harsh, harsh sun late in the afternoon. So I think they'll do well. We've got a Superbell Strawberry Punch. There's a Bacopa, the Snow Globe. And then we've got a Glacier Ivy and another Peachy Keen Superbina. Oh, and a Gold Child Ivy as well. After that, I came over here and filled up this container right here that has got the Juniper Topiary. We've got Superbell's Lemon Chiffon, three Supertunia Mini Vista Indigo, a Scovola called Whirlwind White. And what else did I put in here? Oh, a Superbina called Royal Plum Wine. That's a really pretty vibrant pink. This container is doing real well. Look at that. I do need to come in though. See these bloom stalks? I don't really want the bloom stalks in here. So I'm just gonna take it down like that. I wanna see more foliage, less bloom stalk. Much better. Kinda want the dahlia to be the star here. And when the, the bloom stalks come up on the lamium, it kinda takes over and shrouds the dahlia a little bit. Then I popped a few plants in the tool shed window box. The black mondo grass was already here. Super tunia honey, whirlwind pink scavola, and then the super bells called tropical sunrise. I also took the time to run drip right here. I need to kind of touch up with white paint, the nails and the connector there, but it taps right into a drip tube right there. One less container to water. And last but not least are these containers here flanking the bench. I went with a very simple mix that kind of mirrors the containers with the juniper spirals over there that we just looked at. We've got the Chinook Caladium in the center. I went ahead and planted three of the four inch size Caladiums in here because I do really want it to be huge. And then three Bacopa, the Snowstorm Snow Globe Bacopa. I think that's the right name. But I think it gives a really ethereal kind of soft, delicate look. So that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing all these projects go in kind of like the before shots um, because we do like to give updates to the season to show you guys how they're doing and whether or not we've been successful or if things are kind of struggling um, because like this is the first year that I've used a lot of Bacopa. I used to plant it a lot uh, before my days of drip systems and if my Bacopa dried down at all, I had the hardest time recuperating it through the season and so I got to a point where I felt like it was like a waste to plant them. But seeing how they are reacting, especially in this galvanized tub planter on a drip system where they're getting consistent moisture and they're not relying on me for water, rather they're relying on our drip system, they're doing amazingly well. So I'm really encouraged about that, but we'll see as the season goes on how they do once the extreme heat happens. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you have a really great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.